Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, I will give you guys all the information you need to build the perfect POH for you. I've made a video like this before, but I didn't give a ton of information as to why it is sufficient, so I think it is the perfect time to revamp this guide. Instead, I will rank all of the rooms from least to most efficient and show you what to build in each of them. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing with notifications on, drop a like, and join our wonderful Discord community to interact with me and our members. With a ton of great content coming to Old School RuneScape, you don't want to miss out on all the videos we'll be uploading in the upcoming months. Now, a house in Old School RuneScape can be either a small place for utility tools such as teleports, storage, and stat restoration, or a place to flex a max house or offer hosting services. I am only going to touch on the first type of POH because it will be more common for someone to use their house this way instead of hosting. I will divide all of the rooms in three categories. Social, which are pretty useless. Situational, which have one or two good pieces of furniture but are not that important in the long run. And then the useful ones to make your adventures more efficient. After that, you can decide how to place each room in your POH. So let's look at the rooms which are pretty useless, again, unless you are aiming for the social aspect of a POH. The order of these doesn't really matter since they are as useful as Jagex customer support. First we have the parlor. This is only needed at low levels for you to start the training and it doesn't feature anything of use later down the road. The only use for it is maybe to get a nice picture of you and your friends sitting down in front of a fireplace, or if you're a content creator and you're about to transition into a sponsored segment. And speaking of sponsors, I want to give a massive thank you to this channel's first ever sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is celebrating their third anniversary as one of the top RPG games on the market. Thanks to their continued success, they keep adding amazing content and game modes every couple of months. Come with me and check out some of the most important additions we've had through the years. The Doom Tower is a 120 room dungeon with new and terrifying bosses to slay, bringing new and exciting challenges even for seasoned players. Being a high level collection RPG, Raid keeps adding breathtaking champions to their game, and it really takes mobile gaming to the next level in terms of visuals. Last year, Raid added a new faction called the Shadowkin, which are a tribe of warriors from the Far East that were liberated from the reign of evil. And obviously we cannot forget about the newest and biggest addition the game has ever seen, the Hydra Clan boss. This is the most challenging monster in the land of Teleria, and each of its heads has a different strategy to destroy it. If you manage to beat it, you will get your hands on some of the most powerful items the game has ever seen. This is the best time to get started in Raid Shadow Legends, and if you're not playing yet, hit the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen right now to get a huge special birthday package worth $40. This will include 3 free champions and the 30 powerful brews which will boost your early game immensely. All this treasure will be waiting for you right here. And since it's Raid's birthday, the gifts just keep on coming. All new and existing players can get free birthday gifts worth the $25. Once in the game, after clicking the link, just enter the promo code THREE YEARS RAID to get your hands on all of these goodies. Once again, thank you to Raid Shadow Legends for sponsoring this video, and let's continue. Up next we have the League's Hall. The most important part of this room are the trophies which honestly you can just store by destroying them and then claim them from the League's reward shop. Other than that, every single piece of furniture here is 100% cosmetic, and if you're looking for efficiency, this room is not needed whatsoever. <clears throat> but Kels, you have one in your POH! Well, I need to flex my red pixelated trophy I got by playing a 2007 version of a 2001 point-and-click medieval fantasy game for children for 16 hours a day. So yes, I will display it proudly, but since you only got a mithril trophy, you can scrap this one. The following rooms are pretty useless, and instead of mentioning them one by one, let's speedrun through them to get to the juicy part of the video. The games room has a few games for you and your friends to do, but honestly, they get boring after just two minutes. A garden is only useful until level 54, because at 55 you unlock a formal garden, which is much better. A throne room is only useful in leagues for points, and for you to send the players to the dungeon as a punishment. And finally, an obliette and a treasure room for dungeon activities if you ever host an event like that. Alright, so that was it about the least important rooms in the POH, and now we jump to rooms that are situational. And by that, I mean rooms that have a few interesting pieces of furniture, but are not life or death situation once you are level 99 construction and reach the late or the end game. From least to most important, in my personal opinion, first we have the skill hall. The only thing to note here is a trophy stand for you to mount things like a head you get from Slayer, and if you are not looking to flex your good luck because one of those drops, the only reason you need it is to complete the Elite Desert Diary and talk to the Calphite Queen head. Other than that, it's all decorative stuff to make it look pretty. Next we have the Combat Room. This is nice to set up a combat dummy for you to find out your max hit on either normal or Slayer monsters. 
It's nice to have, but you're not gonna use it often, and you can just go to someone else's house for it. Pro tip, if you can uh, use an Ancient Mace here with a max melee stats, you are going to overheal prayer, which is super useful for activities like the Inferno. Then we have the study. This place has three important pieces of furniture, but again, if you're an unrestricted account in the late game, this doesn't become absolutely necessary. You can build a lectern to make teleport tabs, a telescope to hunt for shooting stars, and a bookshelf if you ever need to take any of the lore books you have encountered across your adventures. But hey, we're playing a video game, we don't have time to read. I mean, I know you all skip quest dialogue, so why even read a virtual book, right? The quest hall comes next, and this is a decent room before you get to an achievement gallery. You can mount either an Amulet of Glory or a Mythical Cape to the Wall for unlimited teleports. If you have these items in your bank, this room becomes pretty useless, especially because you can just recharge your Amulet of Glory with a scroll. I personally have this room in my POH, but if I change it around, this is going to be the first room to go. A chapel is only useful to build an altar, and obviously a gilded one. If you're an Ironman, this room becomes mandatory until level 99 prayer if you're using that method, but as an unrestricted account which can go to other people's houses to use the altar, this one is really only needed if you want to quickly recharge your prayer and you don't have a pool of restoration. The upcoming four rooms all have to do with construction training, so once you have either reached your goal or achieved level 99, all of these become quite irrelevant. Before then, I would say they are pretty much mandatory, starting with a kitchen. If you build the highest level kitchen shelves, your servant will be able to bring you tea to visibly boost your construction level by 3, which stacks with a crystal saw for a plus 6 construction level. Next, we have a dining room, and this is useful for two things. If you want to dump a ton of money into construction, you can build mahogany tables and also build a bell to call your servant whenever you need it, instead of chasing it around your house asking to bring items from your bank. I'm guilty of the sin, as I never had a bell in my house, so please do this if you can. Then we have the bedroom, and for you to have a servant, you will need two of these with one bed each. I mean, where else do you want your servant to sleep? Anyway, this is also super useful because you can build a servant's money bag, and whenever they need payment, they will take the money out of the bag instead of you having to carry the cash with you. Other than these two items, all the furniture here is purely cosmetic. And finally, one of the most important rooms for construction training, if you don't want to spend a ton of money, we have the dungeon. I got 99 construction through oak dungeon doors, and you can do the same in this room once you reach level 75 construction. As a small tip, if you're tight on money and you want the 99, you can also go for mythical cape racks instead. Next, we have a portal room, and this is only useful if you cannot build a portal nexus which is available at level 72. You can build up to three portals which grant you unlimited teleports to one specific location, and if you remember back in the day, houses were plagued with these rooms for the convenience of not having to spend on the rooms anymore. After a portal nexus room though, this one becomes very obsolete. And finally, what I would consider the most useful room in this category, we have the workshop. Not only can you make useful things in a crafting table, have unlimited amount of crafting and farming tools, stands to make heraldic armor, but most importantly you can build a repair stand to repair damage armor yourself with a big discount depending on your smithing level. So instead of going to Bob every time, you can come here and repair Barrow's armor for as long as you have it. And now, time for the rooms that will make your POH an absolute absolute headquarters worthy of legends. Two of these rooms are not absolutely mandatory, but the convenience of having them to save bank space makes them absolutely worth it. First, we have the Menagerie. Not only is this a great room because you don't need to have your pets in the bank, but every time you come here you can see all of the poor creatures you stole away from their parents, as well as your scaling pets. The most important part of this room is the menagerie in the middle, and everything else is just cosmetic. If you are watching at this point, let me know what your favorite pet is in the comments below. Next we have a formal garden, and this is mandatory for the entry portal in the middle. You can also set your trick or treat pumpkin in the corners of the room for you not to get stuck behind your pool of restoration, and everything else is purely cosmetic, and you can also decorate this room with flowers if you want. Now we look at the costume room, and if you're an ultimate Ironman, this becomes a number one priority on the list, but if you're not a masochist, this room is still going to save you an obscene amount of bank space because all of the things you can store in here Skilling outfits, quest outfits, treasure trail items, holiday items, and all of your capes just to name a few A superior garden follows and I would say you need two of these in your house One for the spirit tree and fairy ring combination and the other one for a wilderness obelisk 
If you don't have the level for a spirit tree fairy ring combination though, you may need 3 rooms or even just the 2 by scrapping the obelisk altogether. This room also has restoration pools which are an absolutely insane upgrade for your account regardless of level. So build these as soon as you have the level for them. Next we have an achievement gallery and here you can build an altar to change your spellbook whenever you want. But most importantly a jewelry box which grants unlimited teleports to their respective piece of jewelry. You can upgrade from a basic one with just rings of dueling and games necklaces up to the highest one to have 6 types of jewelry in there. Also not 100% needed but nice to have we have an adventure log space and also a boss layer space for you to put your boss jars and switch their appearance. And finally, in my very personal opinion the most useful room in the entire house, a portal nexus room. Sure, some other rooms may be better in terms of utility, but the fact that you can have unlimited teleports to 30 locations with a nexus, as well as unlimited Jerix amulet and dig site pendant teleports, makes this room an absolute must for any player even if you can only build the base portal nexus. To close out the video fellas, here is my POH for you to either copy or to draw some inspiration from and adapt to your needs. From top left to bottom right we have the following. An achievement gallery with an occult altar and an ornate jewelry box, a portal nexus with, well, the highest tier of portal nexus, along with a Jerex talisman and a dig site pendant, and finally a quest hall with my mythical cape. On the next row we have a superior garden with a spirit tree and fairy ring combination, as well as an ornate pool of rejuvenation, a formal garden for my entry portal and my magical pumpkin, and finally my custom room with all of the furniture I mentioned before. On the final row we have another superior garden with a wilderness obelisk, a menagerie for all my little pets to run around, and finally my league hall to display how much of a loser I am. Now, two things to note here. Number one, I would consider these four rooms to be the absolute core of a POH in OSRS for stat restoration and the teleports. The custom room and the menagerie are there to just help out with storage, and the quest hall, the second superior garden, and the league hall are just there to make the house a 3x3 square and not at all mandatory for efficiency. Second, here are my portal nexus teleports in case you want to copy them. This is comfortable for me personally because I have teleports such as Lumbridge set to L, Falador set to F, Catherby set to C, and so on and so forth. Find the perfect setup of teleports for you to remember where they are located to quickly press a key and teleport to your destination without even looking at the list. And that's pretty much it. All the information you need in order to turn your POH into a superhero layer. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you learned something useful. I want to give a massive thank you to all my channel members for joining this amazing project. I always say this and I always mean it by heart, your guys' support is absolutely unbelievable. If you would like to support this channel further, you can click the join button below to see what type of perks you can get out of your monetary pledge on the videos, on the live streams and also on the Discord. Thank you very much for watching and this time for sure in the next video we will look at an absolute monster of a video in the form of an ultimate gearing guide progression for all combat styles. Have a great week and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace.